Welcome back to Midco Sports tonight. We are inching our way to the middle of February and the conference races could not be more heated in Class A basketball in North Dakota. So only one game separates the top three teams in the EDC boys race. Only half a game separates the top three teams in the West. And that half game margin is the same when you look at the EDC girls chase for the top seed. So that should give you just a taste of what's to come in the next few weeks. So how did we get here? Jody is here to tell us all about it and to look back at some key games from this past weekend. Jody. Yeah, Kelly, hearing you rattle those things off, it, it gives you a true look at how competitive it's been across the board, east, west, it really doesn't matter. And we have teams that are not going to be hoping to win a state championship. A lot of these teams will be going in confident that they can win that championship uh, come late February, early March. The big doubleheader on Friday featured rivals Shanley and Davies, two schools separated by a mile and a half. Shanley was hoping for an upset on its home court. Uh, Davies spoiled those plans in a hurry. Brayton Muchenbaker and Jaden Claybo knocking down early triples. Davies led 9-0 after the first three possessions. Shanley fought back, though Tom Erie slices to the basket. He did that on back-to-back -back possessions. Gave the Deacons the lead later in the first. Jake Cava misses, but younger brother Joe gobbles up the rebound, gets the put back and foul. Joe, a little spark for the Deacons, but the Davies defense turns up the heat. Shane Anderson swats Cava's shot off the backboard. Harry Thome finds Muchenbaker on the break. The Eagles held Shanley without a field goal for more than 10 minutes after halftime. That defense fueled the offense. Baker scored a team-high 20, and Mitch Larson chipped in 15. Davies wins their seventh straight, 75-65. I was super proud of our defense. I think we went nine minutes in that second half without giving them a basket. They had some free throws, but uh, our defense had buckled down the second half, and that's what kind of got us the lead going. Ball movement's good because we, all have, we have five guys on the court always that can do some damage, so spreading the ball as fast as we can makes the defense hard to guard. So heading into the final two weeks of the regular season, the standings look like this. Davies has a half game lead on Cheyenne and West Fargo. West Fargo being a full game back in third. West Fargo and Cheyenne play each other on Friday. That'll be a good one. Davies has dates with both the Mustangs and Packers next week to finish out the year. Out West, Mandan has played one more game than Century. So they're tied in the loss column, but the Braves have one more win than the Patriots. Bismarck, of course, lurking just a half game out of first place. If I had to pick a favorite in the West right now, give me the Patriots. The way that they're playing defense and dictating the pace of play is just championship worthy. Yes, they've had some lucky shots to beat Bismarck and Mandan with buzzer beaters, but there's something to be said about the clutch factor for them. They have it, but don't discount Mandan either. The Braves have three players averaging 13 points or more right now. I won't want to play them either. Now let's go back to Shanley for the other part of that big double header on Friday. This was a top five state matchup in one versus two in the EDC. Shanley entered the night with a half game lead on Davies. Deacons force an early turnover in the second half. Riley Payne converts. She's the leading scorer in the conference. She finished with 21. She's also the top rebounder. They trail by six at half, but this bucket by Sierra Berg ties the game. The Eagles respond though off the miss. Reagan Linster, the second leading scorer in the conference, gonna convert for two of her game high 22 points. Later, it's gonna be Linster going deep to elude the Shanley pressure. Carly Kotzik hauls in the pass, gets the bucket and one. Eagles up four. They go on to win it 66 to 60 to earn the series split for the Eagles. Just came down to having the hunger. She has a lot of messages, but um, his main message was effort. Like if you put it all out there, and that's something we focus on in practice too, is if you give it everything you got, like you really can't lose. Shanley's always a fun team to play and they always match our enthusiasm to play. So that's what really makes that game one of the best of the year. I just have a feeling that we're gonna see those two play against each other one more time this season, whether it's in the region playoffs or whether it's at state. Here's how the standings shake out right now. Davies has a half game lead on Red River and Shanley. Cheyenne is sitting a game and a half back and forth. Davies and Cheyenne still have to play one more time and same with Shanley and Red River. In the WDA, it has been Century and everyone else. Lily Keplin and Lauren Ware are the second and third leading scorers in the conference, both averaging over 16 points per game for the Patriots. Megan Zander scoring a state best 20 per game for Mandan, who sits in third behind St. Mary's. Well, playoff fever is already underway in Class B girls hoops tonight. The districts that have elected to do a playoff will crown champions. Third ranked Lamore, Litchville, Marion faces seventh ranked Carrington. That's a good one for the District 5 crown at Jamestown. The Lobos 
are not a tall group, as you can probably see on this video, so they've had to do some things differently to have success, but it has worked. Their quickness and tenacity has them at 19 and one on the year, and they're confident that they can keep it rolling. Beings, we are shorter and we know that. It makes us work even harder. We can't rely on some six foot girl to come in and drop 20 points on some shorter teams or whatever. So we work really hard on defense. Having uh, the speed does help, you know, because then if we're pressuring the ball on the perimeter, it is harder to get down to the post, which, you know, we're pretty short. So to guard a post that's six foot plus is pretty difficult for us. But we just work on a help side too, you know, helping out each other and just pressuring the ball. And some other great district championship showdowns tonight. District 9 will come down to number one and unbeaten Shiloh Christian taking on Grant County. And then you have District 6. That's second rank Medina Pingree Buchanan against Kidder County. And then a big Class B boys matchup that I should mention coming up uh, tomorrow. Hillsboro Central Valley, the defending state champs against Thompson. That could easily be a top three matchup. It's already guaranteed it's going to be a top five matchup. The latest polls will come out later tonight. Also, playoff hockey, of course. We'll okay. have more on that on Wednesday. So, <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Jody. Coming up after the break, we'll stay on the prep scene, but we're moving back to South Dakota. Jason Andera has your weekend recap. Stay right here.